Sí, sí, porque antes me ha hecho la, la prueba de sonido. Ok. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I am Rodrigo, and I'm going to present my master thesis, uh, a consumer resource description of public goods production in microbes. The presentation is divided as follows. First, an introduction to the problem that we approach. Then I will start with the case of a single cooperative strain. I will continue introducing a non-producer strain, uh, looking for the conditions of coexistence, and I will finish with the conclusions. For many years, microbes were considered as organisms without any social behavior. However, in the last years, these behaviors have been recognized and studied, and now they are an important system to study the evolution of collective behaviors in biological systems. The um, social behavior that we approach in this work is the production of public goods, a costly resource that is available to others. Production of public goods as a uh, cooperative behavior presents two kinds of roles, a cooperator or producer and the cheater or non-producer. Then we're, we are interested in those microbes that use a current sensing mechanism, mainly present in bacteria. Current sensing is a cell-to-cell -cell communication mechanism that can regulate the expression of certain collective behaviors, such as the secretion of enzymes or virulence factors or phenomena as bioluminescence or biofilm formation. Bacteria with a current sensing mechanism activate the collective behavior once the population density reaches a threshold. Um, the way in which bacteria monitor the cell density is through the autoinducers. These molecules are released to the environment and their presence induces the production of more molecules uh, within the population. Autoinducers are accumulated in, in the medium and once the threshold concentration is reached, the expression of genes begins. Our goal is to provide the first steps towards a better understanding of causes and consequences of the public good production in microbes. The main questions that we address are, first, when and why is the production of public goods activated? Then, which are the differences between those microbes that use a quorum sensing mechanism to regulate the production and those that do not? For these questions, we will focus on a single cooperative strain. And finally, which are the conditions needed for coexistence between cooperators and cheaters? In this thesis, I have proposed a non-spatial family of models. This description is based on consumer resource models uh, where we find an explicit representation of the dynamics of, of consumer and resources. For a single species or a strain, the system that we use is the Herbert model, uh, where X is the population density and R is the density of resources. F is the growth rate and is defined as a monod function that shows saturation. M is the maintenance rate and it accounts for the non-growth processes such as metabolism or production of molecules. These equations can be generalized for more species and more resources, and also we can also include a supply function for the resources. What I have done is to use these models for describing the growth of microbial populations when they produce public goods, and in particular, uh, those bacteria that use a current sensing mechanism to control the production. This is the whole dynamical system for a single cooperative strain, where Q is the resource from the public goods. Public goods are produced by bacteria, so the supply function will depend on the population X. R is a limiting resource, while Q could be obtained always by bacteria, um, could be obtained always by bacteria, and uh, for the time scales that we study. Then I have to say that public goods are not the elements that bacteria consume. Actually, I will work with those public goods that are enzymes released to the environment by cells to degrade complex molecules into smaller ones that can be used by them. Then M1 is the initial metabolic cost before the activation that includes the pro production of autoinducers. And M2 is the additional cost due to the production of public goods and uh, autoinducers after the activation. This set of equations is a piecewise smooth dynamical system. First, we start from the Herbert model and we continue introducing the effect of the public goods uh, with a new differential equation. The second part of the dynamical system is included in the, in the dynamics with a step function. This approxima approximation is known as the logic approximation and it represents an abrupt behavior uh, experimentally observed. 
then in this step function, we find the variable r. But we could use the variable x, the population. Remember that the current sensing mechanism uh, presents a threshold of the population for activation. We will use r just to facilitate the work. We begin the analysis of the dynamics from uh, the case when r is larger than the critical value that is described by the Herbert model. Looking for the fixed points, we find a line of marginal fixed points when the population becomes extinct. Uh, so uh, this means that the population always disappears at the end of the dynamics. And uh, in all the systems that we studied in the thesis, we always obtain marginal fixed points. And this is important. Marginal fixed points using conserved conserve quantities, where one again value is equal to zero and the rest of them are, uh, have negative values, are like attractive fixed points that depends on the initial conditions. That is something that we see in the experiment. Coming back to the equations, uh, we see that x can present a maximum when f is equal to m. Uh, we, to see this behavior, we need the condition that the initial value of the resources is larger than the value of the resources at the maximum, that is this equation. Otherwise, the population decays until zero directly. We will call this maximum of the population uh, the threshold. We will consider that the threshold. And this selection is supported by experimental results. And I will show you later one of the figures that we have used as reference. Finally, uh, we want to obtain the threshold of the population. And uh, for that purpose, we use the dynamic system. We divide and integrate. And we obtain the equation. We substitute the critical value of the resources. And we obtain the threshold. After the activation, once the population density reaches the threshold, we introduce the dynamics of the public goods. Looking for the fixed points, uh, especially looking at, at uh, r dot equal to zero, we have two possibilities. The first one, the population becomes extinct, and the second one, that r is equal to zero. The first one, uh, we don't want it because we want to compare with experimental results, and we need a non-zero uh, stationary value. So the fixed points for this case are the following, where we obtain two equations for g, the growth rate. Uh, so we need um, a relation between the parameters. This relation is interpreted as a balance between the production and consumption of resource Q in the stationary phase. The eigenvalues for these fixed points are the following, and we find again a line of marginal fixed points with negative eigenvalues. <sighs> now we want to see if we can reproduce experimental results uh, where we show the growth of bacteria. The main experimental reference is the, the one from Deagle, where they study the fitness of different strains of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. This bacterium is an opportunistic pathogen responsible of a lot of infections, and it's important to know how it works. This figure shows us the dynamics of uh, population density of different strains in a medium where they do not need public goods to grow. And there is a clear difference between those strains that activate the public goods, the production of public goods, and those that do not activate it. For example, the wild type strain, that is the black diamonds, activate um, the public goods, and they show a, a exponential, exponential growth followed by a stationary value that is smaller than the maximum. This maximum gave us the idea of using the, um, the maximum as the threshold of the population. And then the signal by blind strain uh, that do not produce the public goods uh, has a logistic growth. It starts, from a, it starts from a exponential growth and it reaches its maximum value of the population at the stationary phase. We can compare this result with our numerical results of the dynamical system with monofunctions for the growth rates F and G. The parameters were selected to fulfill all the conditions that we obtained previously. And we can see that qualitatively the behavior is the same. For the blue line, that is the population. However, we know that there are microbes that don't activate the production of public goods with a threshold. They uh, produce public goods at any time. Can we distinguish between having or not a current sensing mechanism with, uh, within our formalism? Recalling the Herbert model, the expression of the critical value is this one. And if the critical value is smaller than the initial condition, uh, we will see a maximum of the population. Otherwise, we will not see it. So for activating the production, we need the condition r equal to the critical value. So to, um, the only way of avoiding the activation mechanism is having always the condition uh, critical value larger than the initial condition at any time. We propose that those microbes that don't activate the production of public goods with a threshold, they do it at any time, like we have seen in experiments, because they have this 
condition, the critical value larger than the initial condition. And we, ha we can explain this uh, looking at the denominator of the critical value. If alpha, the maximum, maximum growth rate, is much larger than the maintenance cost, it's likely to fulfill that the critical value is smaller than the initial condition. If alpha is very close to the maintenance rate, it's likely to fulfill that the critical value is going to be larger than the initial condition. So the first case would be having a current sensing mechanism, and the second case would be not having it. As an example, we can compare the bacterium Pseudomonas aeruginosa with the budding yeast Saccharomyces cerisia. Uh, they represent um, having or not a current sensing mechanism respectively. For the maintenance rate, M1, we know that the, it is much larger for the yeast than for bacteria. Yeast are eukaryotes that have specialized organelles, and bacteria are prokaryotes that don't have, they don't have. These specialized organelles, uh, such as mitochondria, require um, an additional energetic cost. And uh, yeast, for the more of yeast, is, uh, eukaryotes are bigger than prokaryotes. This volume requires also a higher maintenance cost uh, due to the growth of the cell and the maintenance itself. Respect to the um, maximum growth rate, we can use the following argument. The experimental growth rate is often measured as the inverse of the doubling time. Doubling time is passing from n individuals to twice this number of individuals. Doubling time for this bacteria is around 30, um, 60 minutes, between 30 and 60 minutes, depending, depending on the medium. And for yeast, is around 90 minutes. So we can say that the maximum growth rate for the same conditions is, is smaller for yeast than for bacteria. It's reasonable to suppose then that alpha minus m for yeast is much smaller than for pseudomonas. So the critical value of yeast is uh, much larger than for pseudomonas. So comparing with pseudomonas, it's a good approximation that the yeast uh, uh, the dynamics of the yeast is governed by the dynamical system of one consumer and two resources, where R and Q are two resources, and there is no threshold for activation. Now we introduce the effect of the, uh, of the cheaters in the dynamics. This is the whole dynamical system for both strains, where we have introduced the corresponding terms of the cheater C. The main difference with the cooperator is that it, uh, the cheater doesn't have the additional cost due to the public goods. That's why it, it's a cheater. And we are going to study again the current sensing case, since we only have to remove the step function to recover the uh, case without current sensing. Before the activation, the dynamical system is composed by these equations. It's similar to the Herbert model. And we find, again, uh, that populations become extinct. The behavior is uh, similar to the Herbert model, but now we have two possible maximums, one for the cooperator and another one for the cheater. The maximum that we will use as a threshold, again, is the maximum of the cooperator, since uh, the cheater uh, does not produce public goods. After the activation, we introduce the effect of the public goods in the dynamical system, and looking for the fixed points, again, we find four possibilities. First one, uh, populations become extinct. Second one, population be populations become extinct. Partial extinction, where we recover the case of a single uh, cooperative strain with the same condition for the parameters. And uh, the last case, that is the, the one that we want to study, uh, coexistence. Fixed points uh, for this case, uh, looking for the fixed points, we obtain these uh, equations where we have a relation between the parameters again due to Q star, and we obtain this equation relating population between cooperator and cheater. This denominator gives us our first condition for um, obtaining coexistence. And uh, computing the eigenvalues for these fixed points, we find, again, a line of marginal fixed points. And in order to have negative eigenvalues, uh, we need the condition that g prime x is smaller than g prime c. That uh, it can be interpreted as the, the cooperators receive fewer resources than the cheaters. So far, we haven't said anything about gc and gx, but you can see that the results depend on them. So, Let's try with different shapes. And uh, for linear functions, we obtain a contradiction in the maintenance cost since the cheater cannot have a higher cost than the uh, cooperator. It wouldn't be a cheater. And using more functions, we obtain this bunch of conditions. And I show you here the dynamics for 
uh, parameters that fulfill these conditions. And we can see that it shows a long relaxation time. We are not sure why it happens. Recalling the questions that we wondered at the beginning, the conclusions are the following. When is the production activated? We have found an expression for the first color of the population that depends on the initial conditions and the parameters. Why is activated? Uh, it is accepted that um, microbes that use a current sensing mechanism to activate the production are density dependent. They, uh, the threshold depends on the population. However, we have found a connection in our formalism between resources and population. And there are also experimental evidences that the activation is resource dependent. Therefore, we have proposed an experiment that is uh, explaining the thesis. Uh, where we want to see if there is a real connection between the threshold of the population that we obtained and the threshold of the resources that we obtained. Comparing, uh, then comparing uh, micros with a current sensing mechanism with those that do not have it, we propose the hypothesis that uh, the main difference between having or not this current sensing for regulating public goods is in the maintenance cost. And finally, studying the coexistence, <coughs> we obtained that linear, linear functions don't provide coexistence while mono functions uh, do it. Thank you for the attention. Thank you. I think you have made a, a good uh, synthesis work in the presentation.